my biopsy, uh, which indicated that uh, I did have prostate cancer. I suspected that that would be inevitable because my son had uh, prostate cancer earlier, and Tim was uh, diagnosed at 48 years old, and uh, I was diagnosed at 71. I was in a serious amount of mental anguish, and I had to pour myself into something to survive it. It was a journal. That was my way out of this rabbit hole that I had fallen into. Tried not to intellectualize it, tried to be somewhat uh, positive and lighthearted about it. I knew after I was given the, the diagnosis that you've got cancer, that my BC days were over. And by BC, I mean before cancer. All that existed for me at that point was, were my AD days, my life after diagnosis. It's not going to be just one single modality that's going to take care of it in, in um, the case of all of the GU cancers. So the experts from all these fields come together regularly to talk about what do we know, what can we learn from uh, the, the folks that we've treated and how can we make things better. So you're bringing all of these aspects of research and patient care together. We helped uh, pioneer a way of giving chemotherapy to folks who had poor kidney function but still needed it for treatment of their bladder cancer and being able to make solid advancements like that all come into the picture when you bring the entire group together. Also bringing in issues like nursing too having folks who know how to take care of these patients. It's a big deal that people overlook the fact that, you know, places that do a lot of procedures have a nursing team that know how to take care of that kind of a patient. At the Abramson Cancer Center, uh, the nurse practitioner plays such an integral role in collaborating the care for the patients, whether it's the connection between the different doctors that you may see, your medical oncologist, surgery, radiation, um, really the go-to person here um, that you call for advice about managing symptoms, about having trouble with your medications, any other things that you may need throughout your cancer journey here. We have the latest cutting-edge treatments including robotic surgery, proton therapy, image modulated radiotherapy, uh, new chemotherapies and hormonal therapies. Uh, we have expert clinicians who provide these treatments, and we have a huge experience of treating men with prostate cancer. So from a surgical standpoint, uh, I'm doing both open laparoscopic and robotic surgery, and all of those options are great options for patients, and I always tell my patients not every patient is a great robotic candidate, uh, not every patient is a great laparoscopic candidate, and in those situations we sit down and we really talk about what's going to be best for the patients long term and how we're really going to cure their cancer first and foremost. The service that I provide is performing surgery for men with prostate cancer. My specific specialty in this area is actually using a surgical robot to perform the operation. So the surgical robot is actually a great aid for me to do the operation in a way where we can spare the nerves that men are worried about. I've performed over 2,500 robot prostatectomies now, which is the top three experience in the whole world. Here at Penn at all costs, we try to uh, organ preserve and perform partial nephrectomies whenever possible. Uh, we have a lot of tools to do that, both laparoscopic, robotically, and open. One of the advantages of robotic partial nephrectomy is that it allows us to repair the kidney quickly and minimize any damage to the kidney while we're operating on it. For many solid cancers and genitourinary cancers among them, uh, it's really critical that radiation therapy be uh, an option that's considered uh, for patients. Again, it can play a role in all stages of cancer from the earliest to the most advanced. And so coming to a comprehensive cancer center, such as Abramson Cancer Center, is going to allow you to meet with radiation oncologists that specialize in that particular disease site, who have active clinical research as well as basic science research, and really are at the forefront of using technology using imaging, using the latest drugs in conjunction with radiation techniques. We look at imaging studies around the use of the drug in the patient. We obtain samples of their tumors either you know, from diagnosis and maybe even at various points in the course of their therapy. 
uh, that we use in collaboration with our laboratory colleagues here at Penn to try to learn more about um, the, uh, the biology of the disease itself, um, how does the drug work, and importantly, how can we predict in whom it will work. Another one of the great resources that we have in Penn Urology is my partner, Bill Jaffe. Uh, Bill did a specialized fellowship in male incontinence and erectile dysfunction. We're working on different ways to visualize cancers. We're working on better ways to actually almost microscopically track the cavernous nerves which allow guys to have erections so that we can do better nerve sparing um, by actually making these different structures light up um, so that we know where they are. A patient education starts really even before the consultation visit at the at the medical center. We try to send inform, you know, informative um, educational pamphlets and brochures to the patient ahead of time so uh, the patient and loved ones can review this material and try to have some background before they even uh, step through the door. Our Uncle Link is a uh, website and it's available to all patients not we're housed at Penn but uh, it's free for everyone it uh, includes information about cancers about treatments side effects resources for caregivers links to other resources also there's a link for the live strong care plan which is a survivorship care plan for patients it's very easy to fill out mostly just check boxes based very individualized for patients based on their cancer, uh, their type of treatments, chemo, radiation, surgery, and tells you um, what you're at risk for long term in terms of late effects, what to keep in mind as a result of all that you've been through, what to look out for, recommendations for follow-up. Really my life today is I'm a little older, I'm a little grayer, I hope I'm smarter. But just because it's different doesn't mean it's bad. Knowledge is everything, and it allows you to be a whole lot more positive and concentrate on getting well. We've managed to get along for 51 years, so I guess we've worked through some of our problems. We, we, are, we are survivors in yes. more ways than one. <laughs> this is true. Never give up. I don't care how bad things are, whether it's financial, whether it's health, whether it's family problems. You, you can't afford to give up. Doing nothing gets you exactly that, nothing. I, c I couldn't say that better.